These are PG and poles. But what does this have to do with the law of tort? Wait, is it even law of tort or law of torts? Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn about the PG and pole theory. Watch this video before watching this video for a better understanding. Let's take a blank sheet and write the essentials of tort and all the tort wrongs we know negligence, recklessness, battery, malice, slander and so on. We write all the torts we ever know. Okay, it is done. Now, let's have a scenario where Mrs. Y throws water on someone. Is it a tort? Okay, all essentials of tort are satisfied. Yes, it is a tort. Under which tort category will it fall now? It will fall under the heading battery. Okay, this is clear. Now, take another example where Mr. X does an act, some act. The act satisfies all the essentials of tort, but the sad part is it does not fall under any of the categories ever known. So, all essentials of tort are satisfied, but it still does not fall under any category. Will we get a remedy in such a case or not? So, this is the PGN hole theory. PGN holes are these already defined torts. So, for some act, if that act falls under any of these PGN holes, only then we will get a remedy for such an act. Only if a case could fit in any of these PGN holes, only then it is a tort. Otherwise, the defendant committed no tort. This is called theory of law of torts. Torts indicate these predefined torts. In contrast, we have another theory called the law of tort. As per this theory, we only see whether the essentials of tort are satisfied. If it is satisfied, then it is a tort and there is liability. Now, we have two theories, law of torts and law of tort. Which of these theories is used today and which have stood the test of time? Before answering this question, if this video was helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, which has stood the test of time, law of torts or the law of tort? It is the law of tort theory. Because we have seen that courts have often created new torts, as in the case of Donnelly vs. Stevenson, where there was no previous tort to make Stevenson liable, even though someone's legal right was violated, the courts formed a new principle to hold Stevenson liable. I hope you have understood the concept. See you in the next video. Bye.